When Dr. James Naismith first put a ball through a peach basket, he probably had no idea how his simple game would evolve. If he could only have seen Pat Riley and his Lakers prove themselves worthy of a world championship. If he could only see the air show that it has become. The heights to which today's athletes have taken this game called basketball. He would surely proclaim the Chicago Bulls and the L.A. Lakers airworthy. As they go head-to-head -head in the place where Dr. Naismith started it all. From Springfield, Massachusetts, the Hall of Fame game. Next. TBS Sports presents... America's Game. From the home of basketball, it's the Hall of Fame game. The largest crowd ever to witness the Hall of Fame game, a sellout at the Springfield, Massachusetts Civic Center in Springfield, the home of the Basketball Hall of Fame. Tonight, the Chicago Bulls and the world champion, Los Angeles Lakers. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Neal, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 1987-88 TBS NBA season. This is the first of 75 NBA telecasts this year. On Tuesdays and Fridays, you know where to find the NBA. It'll be right here on the Superstation, and I'm very happy to welcome back off the injured reserve list, my sidekick, Rick, it's great to have you back again this year. Well, Bob, it's great to be back. I thought my days on the injured list were over when I retired. <laughs> it's great to have you back again. Let's talk about these two teams tonight. First of all, we have the Chicago Bulls, a team looking for new faces, a team looking for balance to go with Air Jordan, and of course, the defending champion, world champion, Los Angeles Lakers, pretty much a pat hand. The Lakers are looking for a roster spot or two, but basically, we've got the solid team and a team on the rise, the Chicago Bulls. Well, that's exactly the story. Bob, as far as Pat Riley goes, he knows his team very well. They're playing without Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's out with a sinus infection and Magic Johnson who has an Achilles problem. He's starting Mike Shrek in the center position. That'll change his rotation a bit with Cooper starting in the backcourt. But basically, this will be the same type of team you're used to seeing. Pressure defense, a lot of fast breaks, maybe not as effective as they would be if Magic were here. Now, as far as Doug Collins goes, he has a little pressure on him. Last year, he supplies, surprised people with an outstanding job coaching. The Bulls now are expected to do a lot better. Doug is in search of an identity for this ball club. Last year, it was Michael Jordan with a little help from Oakley. So right now, they're trying to find the right combinations to come up with to take a little bit of the burden off of Michael Jordan scoring-wise. Now, this will not mean, Bob, that he's not going to score a lot of points, but he's not going to have as many 50-point games. He'll be getting more assists, more rebounds, and really helping the Chicago team be a better all-around ball club. And we've been hearing great reports about the rookie, the Bulls' number one draft choice, Scottie Pippen. We'll get a chance to see him in action tonight. I'd like to also welcome this year as our studio host for NBA Telecast, a man who'll normally be in our studios in Atlanta but is with us live and in color tonight here in Springfield, Massachusetts, Greg Sager. Thank you very much, Bob. Throughout the season during intermission, it will be my mission to bring you the latest scores, highlights, and news from around the NBA. This afternoon, the Chicago Bulls made their final roster cuts. They released the rookie from Illinois, Doug Altenberger, and one of last year's forwards, Pete Myers. Coming up in a moment, it's Bob Neal and Rick Berry as we bring you the tip-off of the basketball season, the world champion Los Angeles Lakers and the Chicago Bulls. Moments away from tip-off for the 1987 Hall of Fame game. Let's look at the lineup. It'll start tonight for the Chicago Bulls. Winners of 40 games last year, looking for the 50 mark this year. Sellers, in place of the injured Gene Banks, Charles Oakley at power forward. Artis Gilmore, starting at center, the A-train, John Paxson, and, of course, Michael Jordan in the backcourt for the Bulls. Now... For the Los Angeles Lakers, Worthy and Green at the forwards. Mike Smrek in place of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who has a sinus infection, is in L.A. Byron Scott and Michael Cooper. Cooper in place of Magic Johnson, who has the tendinitis on his left Achilles. Earl Strom, Terry Durham will be our officials tonight. We're ready to get this game underway. Mike Smrek tipping off against Artis Gilmore. So, as, as they say in a Broadway play, Rick, standing in for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on this performance only... Mike Sprint. Tough roll to fill. Michael Jordan to Brad Sellers. They're looking for a lot out of Brad Sellers in his second year from Ohio State. Jordan down low to Gilmore. Good block from behind by Scott Collins, who did an outstanding job last year. Brought his team to 40 and 42, and he maybe has even a more difficult job this year. Michael Jordan on the break for Lakers. Cooper scores, and the foul. How many times have we seen that one? Jordan against Scott takes it down the lane. It's blocked by Smrek. Two blocks for Smrek early in this game. Three on one. A.C. Green who's having himself an outstanding.
outstanding training camp. Well, let's look a look at the defense again here. You see he's overplaying him to his right. There's a little fake to get him to go that way. Left the baseline open. As he comes over, he catches him across the arm. So he had a bad defensive position to begin with. He had decided to give the baseline away. And then with the little move to the inside, when Worthy made it, you saw that Sellers just completely went to the inside and left a wide open path for James Worthy. And the one thing about Worthy, if I were guarding him, uh, Bob, is that I would make him shoot the outside jumper to beat me rather than letting him go to the basket. And Worthy with the free throws, and we're tied at six with nine minutes, 20 seconds to go. First quarter. Everybody very interested in seeing these Chicago Bulls rookies get into the game, and they'll be in shortly. Scotty Pippen and Horace Grant. Jordan with 10 on the shot clock. From long range, Oakley. Smrek with a rebound. Oakley keys the break. Three on two. Beautiful pass. The jam from Sellers from Michael Jordan. And that's a seven-footer out there getting out in front of everyone on the break. And Brad Sellers and a good pass. James Worthy slipped away from his man for just a moment. And that's all over Green. Really having trouble finding the range so far, but he's had three or four shots already. And the Lakers just continue to run. That's all they know how to do. Well, Doug said this would be a good test to see how well we get back against a good running ball club. And, of course, they're not as good as when they have magic, but they're still very impressive. Jordan has his shot blocked. Controlled by Scott. Good L.A. defense. Good open court ball handling with Sellers, Oakley, and Jordan. Sellers trying to guard, guard Worthy. Now he got a good, he got a good bounce on that one. By now, I'm sure most NBA fans have heard about the, the slight verbal altercation between uh, Doug Collins and uh, Michael Jordan in a uh, practice game. They were playing a pickup practice game, and there was an argument between the two of them over what the right score was, and Jordan walked out of the gym, and it blew into a bigger thing in the press than it really was. We talked to the two of them prior to today's game about the relationship between the superstar Jordan and his coach, Doug Collins. I think it's going well. Uh, we had a little argument here and there, but best friends have arguments. And uh, he's my coach, and I respect whatever he says. And uh, it's a coach-player relationship, and even a better relationship off the court. Little assistant coaching here from Michael. <laughs> More or less, he was a referee at the time, and I was a coach at the time. So. <laughs> Rick Barry, you were a superstar Hall of Famer. You know how Michael Jordan feels about dealing with his coach, right? Oh, there's no problem. I got along with all my coaches. <laughs> I could name some that we could get controversial with. Actually, Michael Jordan and Doug Collins have a very close relationship. It's got to be difficult for both of them, though. The superstar and the coach has got to handle the superstar. I, I agree with you. It's especially different for Michael. He really lives in the fishbowl. Everybody looking at him. Anything that he does is going to be blown out of proportion. And I think he's, he's been exemplary with, his, uh, with the way he's handled himself. Uh, a terrific young man. And... Every once in a while, he's such a competitive person that you, know, you tend to lose it. But Michael realized that he was wrong in what he had done. And, and he and Doug have patched things up. No real problem there. In front of the cameras the other day, uh, Doug called Michael over and said, show him that we're friends. Give me a kiss on the cheek. And he did. But Doug said that'll be the last time they do that. Well, of course, that started other rumors. <laughs> Which were immediately denied. Oakley with only two rebounds so far. Byron Scott from long range, something everybody's used to seeing. And the Lakers suddenly have jumped out by seven with 5.40 to go first quarter. Remember, they're without Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson. Sellers over Schmreck. Nice pass inside. And that man will score on the baseline and go to the line for the three-point opportunity, Michael Jordan. Well, a broken play there, and Michael was able to get himself free underneath the basket, but uh, credit Sellers with spotting him there. And a lot of players who go up to shoot the ball see nothing but the basket, uh, but Brad was able to spot Michael and made a good pass to him. And Green with his first personal of the game. Michael Jordan led the league in scoring last year and contributed in, in a bigger overall way with a more balanced team. And this A.C. Green again doing it. He's got seven, and he's been hitting long-range shots in this uh, preseason. From Corzine from the weak side that time to make Worthy change his shot. Corzine controlled the rebound, too. Michael slipping, passing. Sellers with a jam. Shows you the great athlete that he is. He really was totally off balance as he slipped, but he was able to maintain the balance by readjusting his body and made a great pass. Cooper. Worthy. 
touch by James Worthy, who has Abdul Jabbar and Magic Johnson. Good health and ready to play in their opener on Friday night, which will be here on the Superstation from Los Angeles. For long range, three points, Michael Cooper. Well, the fans from this area remember that type of shot as he hit that big one, game number four, to help get the Lakers back into it and come from that big deficit against the Celtics, the turning point in the series for the championship lead for the Lakers. Jordan lost Scott and buries it. Their starting lineup. Byron Scott, the open drive, and Scott has four. Well, see, Brad Sellers on the weak side should have stepped in to help at, out that time when he saw what was happening, but he's so afraid to leave Worthy that he allowed the opening to remain. Won't be but a few minutes, we'll get a chance to see Chicago's number one draft choice, Scotty Pippen, enter the game. Paxson, Wes Matthews, and Kurt Rambus, and Scott Pippen, number 33. There's a uniform in green in Boston with a number 33 on, worn by a former Most Valuable Player, and Scottie Pippen from Central Arkansas. Well, a very uh, interesting story for this young man. He started out as working either as a team manager or something as a freshman in college and wound up being an All-American player, one of the top draft picks, and he is an outstanding talent. I've seen him play in the exhibition season, Bob, and, and he's a fine athlete, and they're going to get a lot of good play out of Scottie Pippen over the years. Twenty six nineteen Lakers two thirty six to go first quarter Jordan gets everybody airborne he stays there longer and scores also missing Oakley throws it away after the rebound it's one of the problems Charles Oakley's has he's a little loose with the ball when he makes passes oh look at James Worthy. ten points for James Worthy for Brad Sellers Doug Collins hopes to alternate him there from long range Pippen Buries it. Looking at 6'7", 210. Great athlete. Worthy. Giving him some lessons as he finger rolls it home. And James has 12. He's been eating up both Brad Sellers and Scotty Pippen. Well, he eats up most players. <laughs> 30 to 23. Lakers by 7. Shot clock to 10. Jordan over the league's best defensive player. He's fouled. Jordan goes to the line. Cooper gets it. And Michael quick to put his hand up. He realized that once he went airborne and Michael stayed on the floor that he was in big Let's trouble. reset the lineups for you for the Lakers. A.C. Green, Wes Matthews, Kurt Rambis, Michael Thompson, and Michael Cooper. Corzine, Oakley, Jordan, Scotty Pippen, and John Paxson in the ball game for Chicago. And there's about to be another substitution for Chicago and into the ball game the number two first round choice for Chicago Horace Grant 37 seconds to go in the first quarter AC Green from 18 the Lakers need another outside scoring thread right <laughs> Lakers have three players vying for two of the, the, the number 11 and 12 roster spots. We'll talk about that. Otherwise, they have a set hand this year. Well, they should have. Cooper on Jordan. Into the lane. Can't get it to fall, but he will go to the free throw line. And it's Wes Matthews who's called for the foul. Well, Michael, of course, uh, next offseason will become a movie star to add to his long list of accomplishments. He's going to have a supporting role in a movie. Wants to become, he's saying he wants to become when he retires, which hopefully will be a long way down the road because we don't want to deprive all of the basketball fans of seeing this great athlete and great talent. Uh, wants to become a professional golfer, plays a pretty decent game of golf. And i tell you what, Bob, I'm not a betting person, but there is no way he's going to become a professional golfer. Let's get off the injury list. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> so Dale Freed into the ball game for the Chicago Bulls, and that would not have counted as the buzzer sounded, and the first quarter comes to an end. The Lakers have a seven-point lead over the Chicago Bulls from Springfield, Massachusetts. Let's have a look at... 
Michael Jordan, leading scorer with 13 at the end of the first quarter. Well, you see that move that got Michael Cooper to back up, and Corzine came over to help out. His man came to double. That was Michael Thompson. And Michael Jordan just wisely stepped in between the two defenders and showed you what a great, versatile athlete he is and how he's able to adapt and adjust to what the defense does. Today, Pat Riley had a funny line about Scott Rambus. He said, we pay Rambus $500,000 a year just to inbound the ball. Kurt Rambus, of course just to inbound the ball. And That's okay. The Knicks kidding. are paying the green 800000 to get a few rebounds. <laughs> I, I could inbound the ball. Probably what I couldn't do is play against Horace Grant like Rambus is doing right there. Jordan with 15 now. Setting that screen. And here's another one of the youngsters for the Chicago Bulls from the University of Tennessee. Two-time Southeastern Conference scoring champion. Tony White wears number 11. He's very quick, very small, and although he's an excellent scorer, has a lot of areas he's going to have to work on to, to stay in the NBA. Well, they were hoping that he could play some point guard, but they found out that he's really Grant. a scorer. So the Bulls showing you some of their, their youngsters here. Tony White, Scott Pippen, and Horace Grant all in the ballgame. Byron Scott comes in. Cooper goes out for the Lakers. Actually, I think Sedale's going to be the guy handling the ball. They, they don't really want to put it in, in White's hands because they just don't believe that, that he's their answer there. This is action from 1985 when the Los Angeles Lakers received their world championship rings. They could not repeat the following year as world champions. Celtics won. Celtics could not repeat. Now the Lakers are champions again. And the question is, can they repeat? Pat Riley has already said, and he said it right after the World Championship, that he expected this team to repeat. And we'll see the Lakers in action and the ring ceremony Friday in Los Angeles as part of our doubleheader. Lisa Boakley Pippen showing a move down the lane. Nice speed to Grant. Boy, now I tell you, first rounders. But there's an athlete. Now, Scott, you know, I talked to the coaching staff about Scotty Pippen, who's at the free throw line, taking a good look at him right now. And they really felt that perhaps it was a little bit too easy for him when he first came in. I mean, he made the transition without any difficulty whatsoever. And then he ran into a couple of ball games during the exhibition season where a couple of guys started to hammer him. Things didn't go quite so well. They had to talk to him. And he seems to have made the readjustment. And this is a player that you're going to be hearing a lot about in years to come. An outstanding athlete. You see, he has big problems at the line, though. He's shooting 47% from the field and only 57% from the free throw line. Something he, of course, can work on. Byron Scott to Matthews. Worthy on the baseline. Worthy has it stripped away by Scotty Pippen. It'll belong to the Lakers with 11 seconds on the shot clock. A good example of what a good athlete he is. Who's running the show out there for Chicago right now? That looks like a question mark. Pippen. Corzine off the concept. He's not afraid to put the ball in Pippen's hand sometimes at the top because he's such a good passer. May play what they'll call a point forward. He admires the work of Pressy at Milwaukee a great deal. Rodney McCray, a point forward down at Houston. Lighter and quicker this year. Speaking of lighter and quicker, James Worthy. Get it. The Lakers led at the end of the first quarter, 36-29. It's 458 to go second quarter. It'll be a three-point opportunity. He's already committed to the drive, but Sedale three did played excellent defense, and really Tony didn't have to come in and do anything on that play because Matthews would have had a very difficult shot. And, and that's why I think Doug's explaining that to him right now. Something Doug is going to have to do a lot of this year, Doug Collins, if the roster stays the same. He has a lot of young players here he's going to have to talk to. Tony White, Ricky Winslow, Scott Pippen, Horace Grant, they're all on the roster right now. Pippen flashes in the lane. He's got to shoot it over the seven-footer. Nice move in the jam. Grew six inches while he was in college. Wes Matthews from Horace Grant from Long Range. <laughs> Horace Grant. These two first round draft picks playing so well for them. Worthy. Scores and he's fouled. Now let's watch Pippen work. And he's working against a tall man in Mike Schmeck, but he's a lot quicker. Gives a little move. He actually traveled with the ball and got away with it, but he just spun right around him and took it home with authority, and he did get away with, uh, with a little walking on that one. Pippen comes down to the other end and fouls James Worthy, who turns it into a three-point opportunity. Lamp, pure shooter. And you saw a good example of it right there. And isn't it amazing that in life in general, being in the right place at the right time. Gets the rebound. Pippen opened underneath. Look at him leap out of the gym and bank it home. So played a Paxson bad pass. Cooper, Green, and Lamp running. A.C. Green, he has 11. Now three minutes to go in the half, Bulls by three. Ten on the shot clock. 
Cooper, uh, Worthy looked like he stutter stepped, but blew right past. Red Arbach saw him the other day in New York watching a couple of ball games, and uh, he's real pleased with the young people he has. Jordan, oh my! That's the good description, oh my. <laughs> Oh, read them and weep, says Michael. 56-53. Bulls. 2.26 to go. Second quarter lap. Two for two from long range. Let's watch the oh my play coming up right here. Uh, very aptly described by Bob Neal as he just sneaks inside, does a little underhanded flip motion with the right hand, spins it off the glass, makes it look easy. Uh, Pat Riley was funny at the, at the luncheon today for the Hall of Fame. He says, I'd like to introduce my team uh, and playing guard and hoping to lead this team to a world championship. Uh, my favorite player on the Lakers, Michael Jordan. He says, wait a minute, was I dreaming? Well, I'll tell you what, you, you, a lot of players dream about being able to make moves like Michael. And what he did there is he jumped in the air, and Cooper was waiting for him to go for the shot to go after him. But as he was in the air, if you saw, he then leaned forward in front of Cooper, and Cooper was caught flat-footed, had no chance to react. Oakley down court very quickly. Take it to the baseline and gets the ball for his efforts. Nice move. Oakley misses the layup. Jordan battles for the offensive board. Tips it in himself. Michael Jordan down low, battling. Cooper went right over Paxson. Great body control gets the layup. Sellers from 17. Misses badly. Paxson gets Lamp out of position, drives, takes it up with his left hand, misses, but he's fouled. Schreck goes down hard. Now, Michael Jordan hung on the rim. Normally, that's a technical, but the officials realized if he had come down, he would have come down on the player on the floor, and so he held on to the rim to make sure that he got out of the way. Now, watch the play again. There's Lamp running out, overcommitted defensively. Smart play by Paxson. Michael cuts back door. Now, there, going on the ground, you see Mike Schreck. So, Michael, realizing he would have landed right on Schreck, held on to the rim till he rolled out of the way. That's Schreck as in wreck, by the way. Exactly. <laughs> the yeah. rambling Schmreck from Georgia Tech. Points on the Lakers. Jordan misses, but he's fouled. Jeff Lamp with the foul. Doug Collins definitely on the all-gum chewing team. Doug is in mid-season form. He realizes that he really has, in most people's mind and in his, a tougher coaching job this year than he had last year in his rookie season as the NBA's youngest coach. This year, he's the second youngest because of Rick Pitino. There's that gum. They go at it. He's got it. He's got a strong jaw. That's probably from all that talking, doing broadcasting. <laughs> Doug joined us during the playoffs, during the Rick Barry injured reserve time last year. We enjoyed working with him a lot. I told him I was glad he got a long-term contract. Get him out of here. <laughs> you know, you two guys are almost interchangeable players. You know, you could go over there and coach. He come over here, fill in for you. Michael Jordan with 20 points, and they're never quiet. There were players in the league like uh, Lou Hudson when he played with the Hawks who would score 25 quiet points. You wouldn't realize it, but Jordan, you always realize it. Scott barely missing at the buzzer. At the end of the first half, the Chicago Bulls, who had trailed by seven, lead by seven. It was nearly a hundred years ago in Springfield, Massachusetts, not far from where now stands the Hall of Fame, that Dr. James Naismith invented the game of basketball. To bridge the sports gap between fall football and spring baseball, peach baskets were tacked to the walls of the gym. Thus, basketball was formed. At the Hall of Fame, the pages of history come to life. Why, there's Hall of Famer Rick Berry now. Rick, what are you doing here? Craig, I'm trying to make a couple of extra bucks, so I'm running private tours to the Basketball Hall of Fame, and I found this guy outside who's never been in here before, uh, Artis Gilmore. I mean, I can't believe you haven't been here, Artis. I mean, someday you're liable to be in here yourself, you know. Thank you, Rick. What did you think of the uh, exhibits here? I'm totally impressed. Well, look at here. you got some people you ought to know. Hey, your, old co your coach right now, Doug Collins, is Doug down Collins. here. Doug Collins. We've got the Dr. J from Massachusetts, a guy you're familiar with. Uh, Sidney Wicks. Sidney Wicks, Elvin Hayes, uh, Bill Walton, oh, Ralph Sampson. Wait a second. Who's this 53 from Jacksonville? Boy, am I impressed. Great memories. Outstanding. <laughs> Let's take a look at some more things. Hey, look, artist, I don't want you to get a big head or anything, but I want you to know that they also have a couple of my jerseys uh, in this place. Well, Rick, let me ask you a question. Do you still think you can play? Huh. Well, I'll tell you what, Shape. Uh, there's something I haven't shown you yet, so why don't we go and find out? Come on. All right. All right, artist. 
artists, here we go. Here's our chance to see if we can still find right. a still fireman. Let's, let's go this one first. I got, I got one. Oh, you bounced it in there. We're still tied. Up, oh, up, oh, get in there, please. I'm down one. Okay, let's move on. I'm still down one. Here you go. The long one. Let's get a long shot in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm down two. Down one. Let's go to the way in the back. Way in the back. Oh, no! Artist, I didn't think you could shoot that far. Artist told me to be sure I emphasized that he won. But Rick said, well, you know how they keep score in Chicago. With me is the man who is number three on the all-time scoring list, but number one in scoring points with his charitable interest, Julia Serving. For the first time in 16 seasons, not playing and professional basketball, how does it feel to be a spectator at this game? I tell you, it's a nice feeling to sit up in the stands with my wife and, and applaud or agonize over the things that she's been watching for 16 years. And uh, it's quite a thrill. It's quite a thrill to see the pros in action. Of course, uh, during the exhibition season, it's not the time to miss anything because that's a lot of uh, work that you don't necessarily get compensated for. And as the winter rolls around, I'll see whether I'll miss playing or not. But right now, I don't. And I know you were going to ask me that. Quickly, what will you be doing all winter? <laughs> uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm with the Washington Speakers Bureau, so I'm doing some uh, public speaking. And uh, bottling Coca-Cola, doing promotional work with several companies that I've been with throughout most of my career, and enjoying my family and making my own schedule. Well, it's great to see you. Even though it's not on the court, great to see you in the stands. Julia Serving. Now let's go back to Bob Neal and Rick Barry. The game is gone. The Bulls open this second half with a seven-point lead. We'll check the lineups. They are the starting lineups for both teams. Same one they started with. And we have an early foul. Michael and Jordan. it's on Michael. Well, if you look at those statistics, the, the big telling statistics that we see the scoring leaders for both of the ball clubs would be the fact that Chicago is shooting 53% to 47 for the Lakers. Now, the Lakers have been one of the predominant teams in leading the league in field goal percentage accuracy. The Lakers only had six assists to 11 for Chicago. Very unusual, and of course, with the absence of Michael uh, Magic Johnson, that's going to cause a problem for them in that department. And the Lakers were out-rebounded, but that's a problem they've been having in the exhibition season. Uh, they have been out-rebounded by their opponents in five of the seven games that they have played. Now Worthy has 21 to go with Michael Jordan's 21. They are the game's two high scorers, 11.37 to go. Third quarter from Springfield, Massachusetts. Along with Rick Barry, this is Bob Neal. Opening our 75-game NBA telecast season. Artist Gilmore with the jam. This is a tough team for Artist to play against a team that likes to get up and run. Now, Artist not as, uh, as fleet as he used to be. But by that pass, you can tell that he would not have made a good NFL quarterback. Didn't read the defense well. And Worthy with 23. 69-64 Bulls. Scoring the Lakers 27-13 in the first half. Scott with a beautiful athletic move. Very difficult shot uh, going around Artis Gilmer. But... Oh, watch that play again. There he goes. Using the athletic ability in the air with the right hand from underneath the basket. Uh, you have to be a very good athlete to be able to pull that one off. And, of course, Byron Scott is an outstanding athlete. The Lakers probably have the best athletes numbers-wise on their ball. Eight rebounds. Uh, seven. And A.C. Green with eight. They're the game's leading rebounders. Michael Jordan from about ten. Brad Sellers plays too upright, Bob. He's got to learn to get down and be a threat to look to drive. He's so upright, he doesn't get a chance to do as much as he is. They approach the opening of the season. Everybody trying to make a move or two here and there. Wouldn't be surprised to hear something from, from the Bulls in the next couple of days. And that was Byron Scott pushing off as Michael Jordan spotted Oakley wide open. But let's watch the Lakers play the tough defense against Michael Jordan. There you see Byron Scott going. He gets some help coming over. That's why Michael stopped. He gives a couple of pump fakes. And there's the push by Byron Scott as Jordan found Oakley underneath the basket. But the Lakers playing some good team defense there. Five-point game. Bulls with the lead. Jordan into the paint. Has it stripped away. A.C. Green running to Cooper. Worthy with the jam. Byron Scott was in position to do the same thing against the, pass. the Laker break, effective mainly because of their defense. Shot clock, 10 seconds. Jordan in the paint. Won't go, he's fouled. He was pushed by Schmrick. His third. I watched the great athletic move on the part of Michael Jordan as he cuts across the lane. Schmerk has to come over and help him out because Scott was pulled off as he gets up in the air, just hangs up there, it gets banged by Schmerk and still was able to get the shot off and almost pulled it off. 
What a nightmare, though, if you're a big man huh? and you're guarding the center and he's doing the screen and he picks off Michael's man and you know you've got to pick him up. <laughs> Michael Jordan, just another walk in the park here tonight. He's nine out of nine from the free throw line. It's got to be those Carolina shorts that he wears underneath the regular game jersey. You can see him kind of sticking out a little bit at times. Michael was performing at Chapel Hill, home of his alma mater, just uh, last week and had a great night for the Bulls. Worthy scoring again. Worthy now with 27 points, and Michael Jordan has 25. Three-point Bulls lead into Oakley. Pretty good uh, North Carolina alumni game here. <laughs> To A.C. Green. Green. On anybody else's basketball team, the 86-87 performance of James Worthy would have been a most valuable player. But unfortunately, Irvin, fortunately or unfortunately, Irvin Johnson was on the team. But Worthy with a great year, and he's, he's playing well again this year. Well, he's really blossomed into, into a great player. And this happened a few years ago in the playoffs when they lost. I think that James Worthy really realized that he was a great player in the NBA and since that time he has really turned it on and as you look at him right now he's one of the important elements of this Los Angeles Laker championship team I mean he gives them such great quickness at the forward spot he fills the lane as well as any forward in the league and has great confidence in his ability where he has eight points eight of his 27 in this quarter 76 73 Bulls. could cut this lead to one or none on this possession Green cuts it to one. There's another young man that realized last year that he belongs in the NBA, and he just continues to progress. Of course, and because Artis Gilmore, the pace of this game is just too rapid for him right now. Stripped away by Michael Jordan. And Michael got the block on that last play. Michael had more blocks than any other guard in the NBA last year. Nobody talks about his defense, but if he really concentrated on it, he could probably be on the all-defensive team without any problem. Jordan in the open court against Byron Scott. It was stripped away, but Scott fouled him. That's number four on Byron Scott. Michael Thompson, Michael Thompson in for Smrick for Los Angeles. Jeff Lamp is going to get some more playing time for the Lakers. And Scott Pippen enters the ball game for the Bulls. Pippen will come in for Brad Sellers. As we watch Pippen come into the ball game with Michael Jordan at the free throw line, Rick, how will a, let's assume Pippen has a great rookie year and hope the best for the young man. How will he work into an offense with a Michael Jordan? There's only one ball. Well, oh, Michael will give the ball up. I mean, he knows that Scott is a talent. Uh, I'm sure that Doug Collins will come up and devise plays to get Pippen the basketball. And there are going to be times when Michael has to rest. And if that happens and Pippen turns out to be the player they hope he can be, he'll be the guy that will have the ball the majority of the time. 82-75 Bulls, 4.48 to go. Yeah, third to be one of those lively, exciting NBA entertainers. A.C. Green from the corner, buries it over. Dave Corzine. Well, A.C. is just playing with so much confidence. He's noticeably bigger. See it in the thighs and the shoulders. And the confidence is what you really need, and he's got that. Five-point Bulls lead. They've maintained this lead. They led by seven at halftime. Jordan from long range. Michael Jordan with 29. So tough to play him. He's so quick. You have to back off and respect that, and that enables him to pull up with the jumper almost at will. Pippen on Worthy now. Worthy with a spin move. Pippen stays right there. Good defense. Cooper over Paxson. Michael Cooper. The extra inches, and Cooper shot at ease over Paxson, the shorter man. Jordan spots up. 31 for Michael Jordan. What a show. And we still have 16 minutes left to play in this game. <laughs> He's got 31. Bulls back to a seven-point lead. And he really hasn't dominated the offense as far as having it all the time. What a pass from James Worthy to Michael Thompson. Pippen with a little smile on his face. He was knocked on the seat of his pants down low. I doubt he's seen any kind of talent like this in Central Arkansas. Round pick for the Bulls. We'll be in here in a moment. Jordan, open court. It falls. He's fouled. Well, I'll tell you what. He's putting on quite a show here, Bob. And a week from a week from tonight, we're going to see him play against Dominique Wilkins. There's the little move as he does the crossover. He gets the bang. Look at the great athletic ability. Falling down. Great body control. And it's a nine-point lead with 2.50 to go here in the third for the Bulls. 
time with Pete Van Weeren on the second game of the doubleheader Friday night as we bring you that ring ceremony of the Lakers going up against the Seattle Supersonics, a matchup of their Western Conference final last season. And, of course, game one is going to be Milwaukee Bucks against the Boston Celtics. In L.A., although that Georgia-Florida game will be great. By the way, first thing tomorrow morning, the pregame revelry starts down in Jacksonville. Here's Jordan. Oh, give him a 10. Well, the fans had to wait approximately... 33 and a half minutes to get one of those. It was worth it. Largest lead of the game for the Bulls by 12. Cooper from 18. Cooper. Lead back to 10, 2.15 to go third quarter. Didn't impress the Lakers that much. They answered right away. That reminded me of that sort of Superman dunk that he did in the slam dunk contest last year. <laughs> Absolutely. The one I thought he should have had a 10 on, and the judges gave him like an 8 or something. I never did forgive them for that. Minute 58 to go, third quarter. Ten-point lead by the Bulls. Shot clock to three. Jordan creating to Sellers, to Pippen. At the buzzer, Pippen, it'll count. I told you, Michael will give it up, and Pippen's the guy he can give it to. So, big sports weekend on the Superstation coming up from long range. It'll rattle home. Now, Horace now, Grant. Smart play now by the young fella because there's only three seconds on the shot clock, and so he took a very good shot in that instance and came through with it. Bulls by 14. Lamp spots up and scores. Has he missed tonight? I don't think so. This is Corzine is there. Horace Grant with a reverse. You're looking at the Bulls of the future, and if this is any indication, the Central Division, which in my opinion is certainly the most balanced and I think the best overall division of the NBA, is going to get even tougher continue to develop. And I will remind you that they are youngsters, and they're not always going to look this good. Doug Collins with a 20-second timeout. Oh, smart timeout on the part of Doug. He had one to use here, and with nine seconds to go, he's got a big lead of 14 points, and he wants to make sure that his team comes up with a good in shot. Quarter. Pippen travel. Bradley. Five seconds remaining in the quarter. Bulls by 14. Lakers have an opportunity. For the fourth and final quarter with the Bulls leading by 14. this level of competition is to be aware of what the defense is doing and to be able to take advantage of defensive mistakes. It's probably the hardest thing to teach good athletes to do. They have great moves, but they don't realize when to guard, use. as you'd call it in that situation. White took it out to the point, got the basket. That's going to be White coming in to help out from the weak side as he hit uh, yeah, Worthy. Bullets now formerly with the New York Knicks, Bernard King. Who uh, had an outstanding game for his new team, 30-some-odd points last night. And the big question, of course, with Bernard is, will his knee hold up throughout the course of the season? For Bernard, I certainly hope so, but it gives some more scoring punch to that Washington ball club. They also made an interesting trade. confidence here in his youngsters. Pippen, Grant, White all in there right now. Horace Grant controlling, scoring. And that's why they like him, because he's aggressive on the boards. It gives them this is a very important game for, I think, the Chicago Bulls. They're playing an excellent game right now, a perfect way to end the exhibition season, moving into the regular season. It's a great confidence builder for them. Even though Magic Johnson and Kareem are not here, they've done an outstanding job in this ball. Go the ball game, 107-90. Bulls are leading. Worthy with the rebound off the missed Pippen shot. Lamp from 18. He has not missed from the perimeter tonight. 11. Lakers 94. Lamp for three. He has not missed from the perimeter, and Lamp now has 11 points. And I think it's great for our fans to have an opportunity to get a good look at this young man. And you're going to be hearing a lot about him. Now he's doing his Paul Pressey imitation of playing point forward. Mike Brown gets the feed down low. He's fouled as he drives. And yet Michael Jordan is taking a little bit of a rest with 36 points, five rebounds, and four assists. Uh, he's done a fairly decent <laughs> job. Not a slouch either. Rebound in the paint. Worthy rolls it over the top, and James has 31, six rebounds all around. Shot clock to 10, Pippen from long range. Worthy, after it was kept alive by Thompson, rewards him with the pass. The exhibition season. Grant on the baseline over Rambus. Horace Grant. Bolster themselves offensively at center. Couldn't get it done. Go with a pat hand. They're hoping to get a lot of help out of Andy Horace Strike, do you? Uh, no, I really don't. Uh, Horace Grant showing some fine shooting touch, hitting it from the outside. We all yeah. knew about his inside game. Didn't realize he could shoot the ball that well from the outside. He has 14. Foul. And timeout is called by Pat Riley and the Los Angeles Lakers, who are going to suffer their first defeat of the exhibition season. And the Bulls will close out with a 5-4 and four mark. 2.08 remaining. Go get them ready. 
Doug Collins said that uh, he idolized Pat Riley, and Riley was his role model, even though they coach against each other. And Pat says, if you want me to be your role model, you got to get a can of hairspray. Doug ran out high to Winslow. Ten on the shot clock. Horace Grant tried to feed to Mike Brown, lost out of bounds. It'll belong to the Bulls with 7 on 15 Eastern time. Talk about Lakers showtime next Tuesday night. It's thought it would be showtime. Dominique Wilkins, Michael Jordan going at it. Got to have my seat. Grant again from the outside, showing an excellent shooting touch. Grant has 16 tonight, and about half of them from the outside. He talks about 52 seconds to go in this ball game. Grant. Watch him run the court. He double dribbled just as we were going to give him some great puff. Well, what happened there is he was going to pass the ball to Tony White. And as he went to pick it up to pass it, Tony wasn't looking. And so he got caught. Chicago coaches said, you know what else we like about him? He has a mean streak in him. They're talking about playing mean. Of course, you got to have that if you're going to play power forward. Smrek, I see something different. He's still got to think of the Lakers as the favorites in the NBA this year. Milt Wagner scoring from about 10. You're going to make some predictions on the NBA Friday night. Want to give us just a hint? Just a... I like the Lakers. Oh, sure. I knew that was going to get something really <laughs> substantial from By you. the way, the Lakers is still on injured reserve. Thompson not here tonight. They don't expect him back for quite some time with the Lakers. The buzzer ends this exhibition game, the final one of the 1987 season. 128-114 Chicago over Los Angeles. youngsters Horace Grant Scott Pippen Jeff Lamp for the Lakers etc but when you get down to it it was Michael Jordan once again Ricky had 36 points five rebounds four assists was all over the court offensively and defensively yeah, and he did it in only 29 minutes of playing time and Michael Jordan showing you why he's one of the most exciting and one of the few players that I've ever seen who I know I would travel and pay to see play. Let us officially also squelch any feelings that anybody has that Doug Collins and Michael Jordan have any kind of personality conflict in Chicago. They're getting along great, and they are close friends. We happen to spend a lot of time talking about it this weekend. So you put that one to rest and look out for the Bulls. Lakers, same old Lakers. They open it against Seattle in Los Angeles as part of our doubleheader, Springfield, Massachusetts. This is Bob Beal. So long, everybody. Three-game revelry starts down in Jacksonville. Here's Jordan. Oh!